Hello boys, what's going on? Yorkie here and welcome back to another episode of this FIFA 23 Blackburn Rovers career mode and today's episode we're going to kick off with the rival game against Burnley and of course we're going to have the second leg against Feyenoord, the quarterfinal of the Conference League and after a 4-1 victory I think we should be safe and comfortably going through to the next round. We're going to have big games as well, we've got Man City and Liverpool coming up so getting victories here against Brighton and Burnley is going to be huge. If we want to stay sixth in the league and have Europa League football next season which is the next natural step we're gonna have to make sure that we get the results to do it before we get into the games though boys if you are new to the channel please smash that subscribe button as well as hitting the like button let's get into this one against Burnley and hopefully pick up our first three points they are fighting for survival this year in the league now it's pretty much full strength in this one yes we have a game coming up in three days but again we have the advantage we're four one up so I'll rotate for the final game instead of this Burnley one now we can focus on the league Burnley have signed Fred all right Okay. It'd be interesting to take a little peek at this Burnley squad since they've uh, they'll have had to have made a lot of changes coming back up this time round. They've had an unbelievably strong squad in the championship, but they definitely have had to have improved it in order to stay in the premiership. And it's not a bad one. Fred's going down quite a bit now because imagine he's getting on, but they've got Kirkes, 82 rated right now. They replaced Centellus then quite comfortably by bringing in Kirkes. They have some... Decent players to bring off the bench as well, potentially, that we need to worry about. All in all, we should definitely be beating Burnley, and I'm going to be looking to do that in this episode. Without a doubt, you always want to beat your rivals. And a big opportunity for Billy Bennett starting today. He's not been good. I'm pretty sure we're going to shop him off in the summer, and like he could start showing me something else. Gio Reyna with the early shot, deflected into the path of Grant. If I'd have realised that we're going into him, I maybe could have got a shot off. They're struggling now down the left. I was going to pass that one more centrally. Oh, I thought we got the deflection. We needed Fred with the shot straight into the hands of Turner. They're poking the ball forward with Fred having another pop at that. I mean, he likes those uh, long shots, doesn't he? Shots from distance. Might start to open up a bit now. That's a good ball in to Callum Grant. Back out to Gibbs White. And get that across to Ethan Laird. He's going to swap that one back in towards Callum Grant because minus Callum Grant, we don't have the height. Billy Bennett tries to take a good touch. Didn't really work out for him, but... It, He's getting in dangerous position. Oh, the mistake has been made. Callum Grant will be found. Oh, he scuffed at it. I think he might have been offside. He was not and maybe should have made that 1-0. I don't think he realised the ball was coming to him. We're going to have a decent corner opportunity for a decent header, Naley. Can't win it. Get that one out to Billy Bennett. Billy Bennett now. Going to have to do something. And he does absolutely nothing. Press isn't working for me right now. And this is dangerous. It's an award. 1-0 Burnley. Poor defending. We got caught out there. That's frustrating. I wouldn't say we've been much better than Burnley at the start of this one. But conceding to a man who has only scored three goals up until this point is just bitterly disappointing. And it means we're 1-0 down now in this game. And we're going to have to fight back. We need to find a bit of composure. Does Centellus have Callum Grant? He does. Callum Grant then has Gio Reyna. Gio Reyna then plays that to Gibbs White. Gibbs White can finesse them. Gio can hit them too. That was a good save. Starting to ask a bit of questions. That's what we need from the boys. We need them to be asking these big questions. Oh, I just couldn't get it on target. I think we've played the strongest starting 11 for this one. And I'm getting zero answers out of them at the minute. Is that good to Gibbs White though? It is. Gibbs White has unbelievable footwork. Play that one out to Billy Bennett. Then Billy Bennett back in to Callum Gran. Oh, ho, ho. fooled the goalkeeper right at the start of the second half. 1-1. One, one. Let's go ahead now, push on, get that second goal and take the lead against our rivals. Callum Grant definitely back in form again though, honestly. Oh, here come Burnley. Acres of space, acres of space for Brownhill. Turner saves me again. We need to stop getting caught out at the back on the break. It's, oh my God, we've been caught out again and Brownhill doesn't score the first time. But he does score the second. Defensively, we look shocking, don't we, right now? For a route forward, I wanted Gio to maybe make a bit of a better run. Gomez. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful as well. Callum Grant moments after the goal. He's going to make it 2-2. We've got a thriller on our hands. Perfectly timed ball in as well for Morgan Gibbs-White. And Callum Grant in those positions never fail. A couple of subs to be made though. I'm going to bring on Saar for McKinney so he can start the next game. And I, I kind of feel like I need to leave Billy Bennett out there. I think he deserves the opportunity. So that'll be the only change I make at the minute. I'd like to get Ryan Jackson on, but if we can't, it's not the end of the world. That one up, Billy. And Callum Grant. Callum is so good at holding the ball up. Oh, look at that ball into Ethan Laird. And Ethan Laird trying to find Gibbs White. And then Gibbs White across to Gio Reyna. 4-3-2. Giovanni Reyna 
Finds the back of the net. It's Gibbs White again with the assist, but great play. Look at the ball out from Callum Grab to Ethan Laird. That's the kind of football we like to play here at Blackburn. We win the ball back, and then it's just quick movement, quick balls. They can't reset, and we find the back of the net. Gibbs White, they're going to find Ethan Laird, and Ethan Laird going to flash one across to us. Billy Bennett again. I just can't win headers at the minute, although we have won that one. Billy Bennett. Oh, he's managed to get a bit of a turn and a shot. Billy Bennett with an unbelievable goal. The game now is done and dusted. We were in added on time, but Billy Bennett, fair play to him. Take a bow. Still think we might sell him, but that was far better. And that keeps us firmly in sixth. Obviously, we have Arsenal still yet to play their game, but if Arsenal or Spurs start to drop some points, we could maybe even climb higher. I don't think there's any realism that we catch Chelsea. To be honest with you, we probably wouldn't catch Spurs. We'd have to go on an unbelievable run. But 4-1 up against Feyenoord, I think this one might be safe to sim. Still a really strong 11. We might even get the victory. Who knows? But all we need to do is not concede free. And we do just that. 1-1, Balogun scores on your dicker for them. We are through to the semi-final of the Conference League. And the draw is being done. Blackburn Rovers are going to be taking on Sporting in the next round of the draw. And that's a difficult tie. We need to focus on this game against Brighton first. They've got Ivan Tony, so he's going to be coming back for revenge. And I think I might play a, a pretty similar starting 11 to last time out. Do I give Gio the rest? Maybe I do. Maybe I play Angel Gomez there. So we're going to start Ryan Jackson, so he's fit for the next game. But Tyler Adams will keep his spot. We're going to give Reggie Cannon a rest. We'll play Mbete there. Get Ethan Laird back in. St. Tellus. Yeah, this is a strong 11. I'm still very happy with this. I'm going to keep Callum Grant starting and Balogun can play the conference game. I actually want to see how this Brighton side has progressed because they've got some good players. Trossard obviously still in there, but Nsensia, he's not improved as much as I thought he would have done. If we had him, I think he would have improved even more. Jakob Boda uh, has been requested quite a few times and he would be he'd be a very good player. Is he better than Tyler Adams? I'm not sure. This is a beatable side. They've got some weaknesses. They do have some strengths on the bench that could come on though. I don't know if it's because they're rotating, but Flecken doesn't start in net for them. So they're definitely weak weaker at goalkeeper than they should be. Put that one in. Tyler Adams, who waits and waits. And Callum Grant slides it across to Angel Gomez for another goal is what I thought I'd be cheering. It wasn't the case. Fodringham saving. Maybe I gave him a bit too much shade at the start of the match. Well, they've got a free kick. I'm not quite sure how. I didn't actually see what happened, but it's a decent ball in for Turner just to grasp. And then now I just need everybody to start piling forward. And nobody... Starts piling forward. I feel sorry for Billy Bennett there, actually. Oh, Gomez, Naley. What a free kick. It's a fairly good position. Alan Grant's more of a power shot guy, so I'm going to go with him. I'm going to put quite a lot of power on it. I don't think it'll go in, but it's at least on target. Gomez, Naley finding Callum Grant. Oh, that was a missed touch. He runs straight into Fodrigan there, does Grant. But that's the kind of moment that might net as a goal because Brighton, defensively, they, they do look solid. Waited for Callum Grant's run. Callum Grant, he knows he's got Angel Gomez. It's beautiful this time around. Gomez surely can't mess it up again. Oh, what a save. But he's getting the chances. We are creating them for him. He just needs to find the back of the net because he seems to be the free man at the minute. And Bete, I oh, thought he was in a good enough position to fire off a shot, and he wasn't. And now we're kind of out of position, but that's great defending. We're getting a spell of possession right at the end of the half of Brighton, and this could be super dangerous as Trossard brings it back, but it's a massive block. Going to have a corner. Let's hopefully hold on because we have been the better team. Oh, no, no, no. They'll get another one. The ref will give him it. He won't. He'll blow for half time. Okay. That's pretty lucky. We need to uh, we need to just find the back of the net. Angel Gomez does. Callum Grant's been kept very quiet. We're used to that. Teams mark him out of the game. So I'm, I'm completely used to Callum Grant having loads of spells in matches where he's going to be kept quiet. Now, when we do find the free man, and is Angel Gomez, he needs to find the back of the net in one of these attempts. Jackson. Gibbs White wants that ball over. <gasps> we found Callum Grant finally. Oh my God, Fodringham saves it. I, can you believe how good Fodringham has actually been considering the slack I gave him at the start? And Laird out wide. It's a good ball in. It is. Oh my God, Callum Grant tries to nick it. He still has it. Callum Grant, it bubbled about in there. We needed a bit of luck for Callum, but he's finding the back of the net once again. Brotians dial on up top. I think that might be a move, but I wanted to keep Callum Grant on the pitch, so he's going to play out left. Like, Thierry Henry did that at Barcelona, right? And uh, it worked out pretty damn well for him. We're going to try and do that. If Bella Kotchak wouldn't make that kind of pass, though, that would be far more helpful for us. Is this space opening up? Oh, it is. And it's space for Angel Gomez. Oh, I tried to knock it on again. Callum was making a run, and Angel hasn't been very clinical in front of goal, but it didn't work out. Alistair into Grant, and then Grant just wants to play that one in behind to Jens Dahl. 
who is extremely quick. Jens Dahl, oh, what defending that is from Jakob Mora. That's why you guys wanted me to sign him. Gilmore's on the pitch. He's not seen much minutes this season. Adams, back out wide to Ethan Laird. I have Angel Gomez again now. Through the centre, that pass just needed to have a little bit more zip on it. Substitutions that Brighton have made have made them a lot stronger going into the back end of this game. So we are struggling a little bit more now. They're really starting to press me as well, and I'm not enjoying it. Andreasen should win that header. Now, can we get bodies forward? I want Callum. I want Callum. Bloody Grant! Oh, of course he finished it! Thunderball into the top corner. Callum Grant makes it 2 0. What a delivery from Ethan Laird. I knew if I could find a bit of space out wide, we pump it to Andreasen. Loads of space for Ethan Laird. What a ball, but what a finish. He still has so much to do there. What a result that is now, because it weren't easy, but 2-0, we finally started finding the back of the net. Of course it was. Once Callum Grant started to get a little bit of space, yes, it took a mistake, but a little bit of space, the man punished them. And Arsenal have drawn. Arsenal drew 3-3 free free with Manchester City. That is massive, because it starts to bridge a bit of a gap, and we can start to relax. And we knew we needed that gap going into this game against Man City, because they're going to be hard. So it's Man City, then four days later, Sporting. Four days rest doesn't make me stress, really, about what starting 11 we put out for this one, but it, it is going to be a quick sim. We play the top sides all the time, and uh, we've got to play them that much in this series that... When I don't feel like we're definitely going to be 100% winnable, which this definitely is, and I don't see the point in playing them all, I feel like it makes sense every now and again to sim these ones. I think that just adds a bit more realism to it as well. Let's even give Billy Gilmore the start. But Gio and Grant, I mean, they still have to start up top. And who knows? We might get some crazy-ass result where we get a victory and we get a point. And that is huge. That is a massive point. And guess what? Billy Gilmore scores a goal that gives us a point. Erling Haaland scoring for them. And for the big one, though, and it's sporting. And this could be this could be where we get knocked out let's be honest guys this is our starting 11 i think the big news with this one is we're going to stick with gomez i love tyler adams but mckinney's going to drop to cdm and i just think gomez is playing really well creatively and his link up with rayner and gibbs white could be what unlocks this defense because they're playing five at the back then kai gregory on the left billy bennett's having a good episode but i think gregory on the left makes sense this is a strong side that we're coming up against we're going to take a quick look at it and see their overalls when we get into the game but I already know the right-hand side with uh, Pedro Porro and Fatou, who I've used on Football Manager and grows to be a beast. So I'm pretty sure he'll grow to be a beast in FIFA. And I don't think I was too far wrong. He's 82 rated. I think you could get him even higher if you signed him. He's honestly a really good signing for season number one, especially if you're like a mid-table, lower-table prem side. The rest of the team looks good, though. As you can see already, we've got players that are over 80 rated in the strike force. So defensively, we haven't been good. They're going to be a problem. In midfield, they're not terrible. As we move back, maybe it gets a little bit weaker. But I mean, look at the defense. They've got Pear Scherz in there, who will be a lead at the back at this point for him and of course Pedro Porro 88 overall Maximo is a hard goalkeeper to beat too so this is a very strong sport inside they will be one of the favorites to win the competition alongside ourselves but hopefully we've got enough on the pitch here now they have a player in Pedro Porro that is higher rated than anybody in my squad so that is frustrating and this could end up being a game of attacks whose attack is better I know defensively we've had our frailties I don't think they will have frailties because of who they have on the pitch. They're playing five at the back. It's going to be very good. Although I expect their wingers to get really advanced. I still think they're going to be really good at the back. Ethan Laird might be the big guy here at the back up against Van Agre. And when Van Agre pushes forward, that should open up space for Ethan Laird. Now we're at the semi-final, though, of this major competition. We are probably going to extend these highlights, so they'll be a little bit longer. I hope you guys are okay with that. Early mistake leads to a Callum Grant chance, and he never misses those chances. That was a terrible throw-in. Their manager will be fuming on the sideline, but Callum Grant could be nothing but a happy man this episode. He has bagged goal after goal after goal. I think he's been... Uh, he scored in every game that we played so far. He was always going to finish this, but what a mistake. It was always going to be hard to break down their defence. And a mistake like this just left them wide open. We draw first blood. Let's see what Sporting can do now. Pedro is unbelievably good at football. Pedro Gonçalves, I think it is. I mean, he's just so good. Reggie Cannon is going to have to be well on it today to deal with him. Get that one into Gio. Gio back into Gibbs White. Is Ruben Van that quick? I think that is Ruben Benagre into Callum Grant. Oh, that was 
So unlucky. We've ended up with a dangerous free kick. And I'd be remiss not to try and take this one on. We're going to do it with Gibbs White, though. Put a decent amount of power on it. Let's just see. I mean, we might as well test the waters. Oh, that's close. Don't make a mistake. Matteson back inside. Oh, if we'd have just got that to Gio Reyna, it would have been 2-0. What right now in this half must be just praying that they can keep the scoreline as it is because they've been woeful. Gibbs White wins the header. Grant with touch. Keeps the football, too. Callum Grant's footwork, as this series has progressed, has just got better and better. That is a great ball in towards Kai Gregory, but he's got no high. He seems to be doing a really good job of just stopping their midfield, breaking free. Oh, Callum Grant's brought down, but it doesn't matter. Ethan Laird slides that one in behind to Morgan Gibbs-White. Morgan Gibbs-White has been great this season, and he's going to continue that. It is 2-0. Calm, cool, and collected from Gibbs White. And once again, this sporting defence is collapsing. And I'll tell you something, lads. We've been looking for a centre-back. Pairs from Sporting. What are we saying, guys? Because that's a realistic signing from a club like Sporting. He could be the answer back there for us. He's not having a good performance right now. But it's all come from the right-hand side. It really has. That's where they were weakest. Ruben Vinagre. And I can't remember who the other centre-back is. But that's their weakest side, I believe. The referee blows the half-time whistle with Blackburn Rovers. A quarter of the way through this tie. Looking comfortable. They don't seem to commit. Like, they're, they're not committing bodies forward. Considering how good their attack... Oh, that was Paul for Madison. But considering how good their attack is, that's the first ball... They played into Paul Vidis this entire game. This is another good free kick position. And of course, there's only one man stepping up for this. It's Morgan Gibbs-White once again. See if he could do anything with this one. Decent power, decent shot. Ah, too much of the goalkeeper. Didn't get enough curl on it. White fires that one into Gio Reyna. Gio Reyna's footwork will help him massively. Finds Gibbs-White. Gibbs-White then back into Gio. Reverse pass. Oh, what a save. Keeper's got to be fuming right now because Sporting haven't even defended well. Like, they've not attacked, and they've not even defended well as that lands to Bella Kocha, forcing Maximo into an unbelievable save. Here in Lisbon, we seem comfortable. There is one side that is up for this game right now, and that is Blackburn Rovers. I don't know if at any point they're going to start stepping up their attack, but what a ball that is to Callum Gr Oh, be on side. Oh, my God. Callum take up our wet. Unplayable when this man... He's putting in performances like this. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. It's 3-0. I thought this game would be far more difficult. What a volley. Oh, is there more on the cards here when they're performing like this? We could probably go on and score quite a few more. That was better defending from Sporting. And now, for the first time, we might have been caught out. Palvidis is clean through. Palvidis is clean through. What's he done there? What? What was that? I've never seen that before. That should have been 3-1. See what kind of ball I can whip in here since the subs are on. And it's towards... I think it was Madison. Gregory picks it up. He's actually had a really good game. It doesn't feel like it because he's not scored. Is that the ball? Behind? It's not when it's Reggie Cannon. And giving the ball... Oh, no. Giving the ball away there is difficult. Pedro is through. Can I catch him with Ethan Laird? I don't think I can. Will it be a better shot this time? It will be. It will be 3-1. And is there a little bit of a fight back on the cards now for Sporting? They won't want to be embarrassed. And that was a great finish. Grayson. Oh, that's beautiful. Balogun. Oh, it's going to be 4-1. I say we need to see the game out. No, we don't. We just need Florian Balogun to start bagging some goals. Sporting might have thought they were back in it. But we found a route to make it 4-1. This is a great pass from Andreas. And by the way, weighted perfectly and a good finish. I mean, the keeper actually is had a mare. Considering how well Maximo's played the entire game, that was that was a bit of a mare. Full-time whistle is blown to see Blackburn Rovers take a 4-1 advantage. It's the same as the Feyenoord scoreline. I think this one isn't over, though. They started to play much better towards the end of the half. I'm just shocked how poorly they defended. And to be honest with you, that first half, they were horrendous. The mistake early on probably set the tide for this game. Once again, Callum Grant was great. But look at that mistake. Early doors, a mistake like that can really change how the tie goes. I know where a Centellus transfer bid. It's a bit random. It's from Bournemouth. I mean, we're going to reject it. It's a pretty decent bid, actually, if we were looking to get rid of him and upgrade at left back. But... Uh, we're going to reject that. That's Liverpool up next in the league. And um, I'm, I'm going to sim this one again. Like I said, guys, I don't want to always play against the big teams. So we're going to sim this one again. I go a little bit tired, but I'm going to go pretty much full strength. And if we could, I'd genuinely take a point from this one. Because Liverpool are top of the league at the minute. 2-1 defeat. It's not embarrassing. Balogun did score the opening goal. But Darwin Nunes in the 64th minute gives Liverpool the victory. That does see us sat in sixth place in the league. I wouldn't say we're comfortable by any stretch of the imagination. 
destination, but it is more comfortable than it was recently. We will definitely not be catching fifth place Spurs now. That's without a shadow of a doubt. But we have two winnable games, and if we win those two winnable games, Blackburn Rovers will have Europa League football thanks to finishing sixth. Now, I do believe that we could still win this competition. How did the first leg go in the other game? It was a Celtic win, 2-1. So potential final of Celtic and Blackburn Rovers in the Conference League. It's insane, actually. I would love to see that in real life. I would love to watch that. But we will be ending the season next time around. We've got Aston Villa and Everton there. They're the two winnable games. And then obviously Man United will probably play the second leg and then hopefully play the final. I'm being optimistic, but at 4-1 up, I do imagine we will be in the final. And then we will round off season number five i can't believe it boys we're nearly here season number five nearly in the books but thank you very much for watching this one i appreciate you all thank you for your continued support smash the like button hit the sub button and i will see you for the next video